Good morning, how are you? It's Miss Blanchfield and I'm here to teach you an art class today. We're going to make a cherry tree, cherry blossom tree. And um, I decided to make a video for you so that you could learn how to do this since we're not together. I miss you and I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having fun with your families. Okay, for today you're gonna need a piece of, two pieces, one piece of white paper and another piece of white paper. You're gonna need some scissors and a pencil, and you will need some watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, you can use crayons, markers, or color pencils for this project. Okay, so step one, let's get started on this. Oh, I'm sorry, also you're gonna need a glue stick. If you don't have that, you can use some, uh, a bottle of white glue would be fine as well. Okay. So the first piece of paper, I want you to take it and I want you to paint the whole entire thing pink. I have done this ahead of time. Sorry, there's a little shadow on uh, my, my um, desk today, but I want you to paint the whole thing pink and set it aside to dry. While that's drying, we'll take the other piece of paper and we're gonna have it this direction, which this is the tall way, is called portrait or tall. If you had it this way, the long way is called landscape. We're gonna do portrait or tall, okay? So I want you to get your pencil and I want you to trace your own hand. If you need help from one of your parents or maybe an older brother or sister, they can um, help by tracing your hand for you. And yours is gonna be way better than mine because I have a really, a much bigger hand than you. So you're gonna put your hand on the paper and I would like it if you could spread your fingers out. Don't have your fingers close together. Have them spread out and so that it fills up the whole page. See how we have a little bit of space here and your arm comes all the way down? I don't want it way down here like this. Let's have a whole big tree filling up the whole piece of paper. Okay, so carefully you're going to have somebody help you or you're gonna trace your own hand. This is gonna be the tree. And these right here are the branches of the tree. Maybe you've already done something like this in school or for another art project at home or at school. So trace that. Take your time. Go carefully. Go all the way down. And then you have your hand, which is going to be your tree. So next, I'm going to ask you to get your watercolor paints. I'm gonna move everything out of the way. I have a really big set of watercolor paints. They look like this. And this is what I do when I'm making, what I use when I'm making my paintings that I wanna sell. You're gonna need some water and a brush. This is the brush I'm gonna to use today. And I'd like you to get a lot of good water on your brush and in your brown paint, really mix it up. See how I'm kinda of like rubbing the brush against the paint to just Get it really wet and loosen it up so that we have a nice juicy amount of brown paint. Okay? You're going to go ahead and paint carefully inside your line that you made all of the parts of the tree. So I'm going to start with the fingers and I'm going to paint quickly, but you're going to take your time. You might even do your painting after you're done watching this. You don't need to do it at the same time as me because maybe you want to rewind this or pause it so that you can take your time. But I'm working fast. Did you have a good breakfast today? Guess what, here's a little secret. I'm doing this painting or this uh, video the night before. So I just finished having dinner. You're gonna watch this when you're having breakfast and I'll probably be having my breakfast while you watch this. Okay. Being really careful to stay in the lines there. Sometimes you might even need to dip your brush in a little bit more water. If your paint starts feeling dry and it's not real juicy over there, you gotta put some more water in. So keep going, paint the whole hand or the whole tree. Mine's a little funny right there because I have these bracelets on. So when I traced around them, it made some bumps, but that's okay because in nature, trees are sometimes bumpy or you could even fix it with your paint. If you don't like it, you can just kind of get rid of that bump and fix it. Okay, so did you see how I went all the way down to the bottom so my tree is planted? Okay, so there's my tree. 
Now I'm going to rinse out my brush and with some green paint, I'm going to put a little bit of grass or earth down at the bottom. Now I have to be careful with this because if I let this green paint on my brush touch this brown paint that's already wet, they're going to mix together and it might make a funny color. So I'm going to be really careful and not let those two wet areas of paint touch each other. So can you see there's a little space of white in between there, in between the brown and the green. Then I'm going to come over on this side and do the same thing. So I'm making the grassy area where the tree is growing from. It's right here. Do you see what happened? Can you see how some of my wet green got into my wet brown? That's what can happen if the two wet paints touch each other. It's not a big deal. It could look kind of neat. I'm going to leave it alone. But that's what I was talking about could happen. Okay, so it would be a good idea, once you finish this, to set it aside and let it dry. But since we're doing a video all together, I'm going to do mine all at once right now. Remember that page that you did before where you, had, you painted it pink and you let it dry? Well, hopefully it's dry, so I want you to get that. And then I want you to crumble it up. All right, that's crazy. I ask you to paint something and then I ask you to crunch it up. Okay, now open it up. And if you look at it and it's not super crunchy, why don't you crunch it up again in a different direction? Maybe one more time, just get it really wrinkly and then open it up. Now, now that you've, you've crumpled it, I want you to rip it. But I don't want you to just rip it in big pieces like this. I want you to rip a lot of little pieces about the size of, let's say, maybe popcorn. You eat popcorn, so you know how big that is. But I want you to rip several pieces. Don't do little teeny tiny pieces because they're kind of hard to handle, but you're going to rip it up into all these pieces and I'm laying them here around the tree so you can kind of get an idea and see how big they are and what might come next. So you're going to do the whole, all the paper. For now I'm just going to do a little bit. Okay, so when we have these ripped up wrinkly pieces, let's get our glue stick. Open it up. I want you to put glue. I'm going to use the back side of this piece of paper to show you. I want you to put glue on the crumply little piece. Okay, I don't want you to put the glue right down here because sometimes too much glue gets there. This way, you have the glue right on the back of your piece of wrinkly paper. I might even wrinkle it again and then let me stick it on. These are the blossoms of the cherry blossom tree. This is the time of year. Actually, even a couple of weeks ago, they started blooming. And when you stick them on, it's okay if they stick up a little bit, or maybe you even wrinkle them a little bit and then stick them on, because it gives it kind of a, um, a fun texture. It gives it the feeling of being a little bit three-dimensional. Some of these pieces are sticking up. Whoops, sticking to my fingers too. You might have to wipe off your fingers on a paper towel or something. Okay, so all of those pieces from that other piece of paper that you put on, that you um, painted, you're gonna tear them up and stick them on. You're gonna stick them on all over this tree. So I'll just tear some and put them so that you can kind of get an idea. But you're filling in all the branches. You might even have a few pieces down here on the grassy ground where the petals fell onto the ground, okay? Before we leave, does this look good? That really big piece like that? Does it look natural? If you put it down here, does it look good? No. Let's make them small. Okay, this is one of those projects where you kind of have to slow down and take your time. Rip them apart. And just put them all around. Okay, so that's your project. You're making a cherry blossom tree. Don't forget at the end to sign your name down at the bottom because all artists sign their artwork when they're done. And I would love to see a picture. So if you have some help from an older brother or sister or from your mom or dad or parents or grandparents who can help you to post this on Google Classroom or maybe even take a picture 
with their phone and send it to me in, in an email. So I hope you had fun. Have a great day. Hope you do something fun outside. Thanks.